cosas dagas lisandis, Theodorix precadai. Escalthis, yo disco nulaisiai. Furist, taliamas. Anas, tuai, tris, fedor, fimf, sex, sevun, acto, neun, tehun, analif, tualif, tri tehun, fedur tehun, fimf tehun, sex tehun, sevun tehun, acto tehun, neun tehun, tuai tichivis, tris tichivis, fedor tichivis, bla 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 tichivis, hundarada, thusundi, colus, lohast. Scaos y her, ciudiscano futharca. Sindi tuai futharcans, latiscano ac runisco. Ac istilachtizo brucans latiscano futharcano. I adapted the existing old futharc alphabet to fit the transcriptions of all these letters and added modern diacritics in order to match pronunciation with transcription. The second and last adaptation would be the Ichwas rune. The historic pronunciation of this rune was I, and was common in the early Old English era. But this sound doesn't exist in Proto-Germanic, so I used this rune to transcribe the nasalized uh sound. Please remember that there is no written evidence of Proto-Germanic. The Old Futhark alphabet is thought to have been first used during the second century, during the latest stages of the Proto-Germanic language. Thus, I had to use younger material to try to write down this ancient language. There are three different A's in Proto-Germanic. Short A, long A, and nasalized A. The difference between a short A and a long A can be hard to hear. The short A corresponds to the A sound in standard Parisian French, like in the word café. It should be pronounced up front, not like in British English, can't, nor like in modern rural French, café. A long A, on the other hand, is the same sound you pronounce in Dutch when you write down the double A in a word, like in the word gaan. Listen to me say this word with a short A and then with a long A. Gaan, 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 gaan. If you use the short A, Dutch natives will immediately label you as French. Speaking of French, this next letter, en, is a nasalized sound found in French, often used when mocking the French language. Oh la la, bon sang, on a un copain mangeant constamment des baguettes de pain en chantant un refrain dérangeant. In this clip, you also hear the other nasalized sounds, un and un, which correspond to these letters in Theodisco. The nasalized O is pronounced un. Sometimes you can find an overlong version, un. Hear this word with a nasalized O, bracon. The nasalized I is pronounced un, and un if it's a long one. You should really get used to these three sounds, because they are very common in Theodisco. B and D can be pronounced as they are in all of the modern Germanic languages. There are exceptions when the B is placed in a so-called weak position. Then the sound would shift to a softened fricative sound, v or the. Weak positions would be between two vowels, which is frequent, as in the verb hevona, to give, and fadis, meaning husband. Or after a consonant that is not an M or an N. This barely ever happens for a B, but happens quite often for the letter D, as in andaurdia. In this word, you can hear both pronunciations of the letter D. It means to answer. G is the last letter that can soften and become a fricative depending on the letter's position. Between two vowels or when it's the first letter of a word, it becomes a fricative G. The same sound as a soft G in Southern Dutch. Otherwise, it's a plosive G. G has an other pronunciation when it comes after an N, as in singwana, to sing. You heard me utter the French word café earlier, which contains a short E. The long E is the sound Flemish people use when they pronounce the double E sound, as they do not create a diphthong like their northern neighbors do. Z. Listen to me say this word with a French accent. Z. Spot the difference? The letter E also has an overlong version. It's basically the same as the long E, but you hold it until it's Ragnarok. 
F, K, L, M, N, P, S, T, and Z are all pronounced just like in English. English, Picard, and Wallonian are the only modern languages who kept the ancient pronunciation of the letter W, W. The V sound, V, doesn't exist in Proto-Germanic. The letter H can sound confusing, because all modern languages pronounce it as a glottal fricative H, like in Hey or German Hund. But it seems that back in the old days, it was pronounced like an uvular fricative H, or possibly a velar H. In order to avoid confusion, I prefer to use the uvular sound H to distinguish it from the letter G. I is pronounced as an E if short and E if long. J is pronounced Y as in the English U, Dutch J, Norwegian J, or German Jägermeister. O has got five forms. The two nasalized we covered earlier, a short, a long, and an overlong. An example of a long O would be in Rodias, meaning arranged or spoken of. It's not Rodias, but Rodias. Don't make it overlong Rodias either, because it would sound weird. An overlong example would be Mako, which means comrade or colleague, or Frio, which means male spouse. This letter is called Thorn and should have never left the English alphabet. It is the hard TH sound English uses a lot. Think, thank, thor, thought, with. All of these words should have been written like this. The last letter will be the letter U, which is pronounced U and U if it's a long one. There's a nasalized version of U, which I honestly struggle with myself as I have never heard it in any other language. But I assume it's pronounced something like U. That was it for today, guys. I hope this guide will help you in order to decipher future videos and texts in the old tongue. If you've got some questions, please leave a comment and I will gladly answer.